We mourn the loss of Stanton Friedman, one of the earliest, sanest, and most respected men to ever grace the field. Here's my own story. Stanton agreed to do an interview with me for the Bigger Questions show, and he was at an event in San Diego. He came to my studio in LA, and it was one of the best interviews I ever did. Stanton meant a lot to me for a few reasons, and one of them was because when I was growing up, I would see him on television, and it really made me pay attention to the field, because here was a guy who was a scientist, a real bona fide scientist, talking about this field like, like it made sense, like there was something to it. And he was a logical, rational mind making a good case. And I can honestly say that if it wasn't for Stan, I probably never would have gotten into the field the way I have. On the way back, I decided to drive him back to San Diego myself instead of using one of the drivers. And him and I talked for a long time. And then he fell asleep. And I remember I was just driving in my car with Stanton Friedman in the passenger side, sleeping. And it was just one of those moments where it was like you, you met your hero and now he's sitting right next to you and you guys are just having this time together and it was just so special and I just felt in that moment this really warm sensation from the universe that anything is possible. In the interview Stanton and I actually discussed the inevitable. Uh, here's something that I, I like to talk about and that is the, uh, the, the spiritual implications of all of this. Do you believe in life after death? Yes, I do. And I think it would be astonishing to me if the advanced civilizations out there don't know a lot more about these, quote, paranormal phenomena, one of them being uh, reincarnation. Uh, look, I I've listened to a tape of a gal under hypnosis reliving being taken through a wall and the total astonishment in her voice, you know, how did that happen, <laughs> kind of thing. There was a wall and she went right on through it. Uh, telepathy, they seem to communicate telepathically. Now, we like to poo-poo that, we quote scientists. Right. And in the book, uh, Science Was Wrong, um, my writing partner, Kathleen Martin, has a whole chapter on all the published in scientific journals studies that show that this stuff goes on, controls and everything, but where the scientists don't want to admit it. You know, that's, that's a field that I, I'm doing a lot of work in right now. I call it the quantum paranormal. And the reason I say that is because, you know, I look forward to the day when science can explain with a formula the existence of intelligence design or that when neuroscientists actually acknowledge that consciousness survives the brain. So near-death the, experiences. Near-death experiences, which seem to be, you know, the, a lot of people trying to debunk that, but it's, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of studies out there that are really starting to make sense. I don't know how to do it, can't be. That's right, the exactly. Attitude. So as a, as a scientist, you see the door opening to, to newer theories in, in sure. quantum mechanics, helping to explain what was traditionally thought of impossible phenomena? It, that's been the history of mankind in the last hundred years. We begin to accept things which we thought were impossible. Uh, like I say, in our book, we have a whole bunch of things that the big shot said couldn't possibly be, but that turned out to have been, to we take for granted now. And so I'm an optimist on that account. I mean, I'm an old guy, but I remember how much things have changed. And uh, remember, Technological progress comes from doing things differently in an unpredictable way. And anybody who wants to deny that is doomed to be wrong because that's the whole history of the planet. That's the whole history, yep. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think we're going to be finding new things. Uh, and I think that we need to recognize our own limits of our thinking, if you will or just our ability to comprehend and our brain's ability to process the information. Yes, and we, things are possible even if we don't understand how they're done. Thanks to Stanton Friedman for all you did, and I hope you finally have some of the answers that still elude the rest of us all.